Welcome back. This is episode 4 of Getting Started with Windows 2D. And in this episode, we'll be creating a very generic uh, class called a scene. And like I said last episode, a scene is just a collection of generic items. It will have an update and it'll have a draw. After we're done doing that, I think we might go ahead and make another class to manage the scenes, which is going to be, of course, the scene manager. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> I think okay. Just to make sure this is the exact same project uh, as uh, the last episode. Let's see what it outputs. Okay, I remember this. All right, so let's do like we always do and. add uh, a class to the share project. We'll call this generic scene. And always let's change the namespace. Okay. Make this public and let's see what we need. We need an update. We need a draw. Mm. Then we need a collection of generic items. And for now, I think that's about all we need. So let's add in the namespaces we're going to use. Mm -hmm. That's about right. Hmm. Well, with scene we'll have a size and location, a few um, other properties that are pretty generic, and hmm, we can probably just derive this from a generic item like that. Now, if we do that, we have to override the update and then override the draw. Okay, now we'll take care of that, and it will have a size and a location. Now all we need is a collection of generic items. Hmm. And this one will use a list of, well, generic items, and we'll name it just objects. And I don't know if you prefer it this way, where I declare uh, the new in, uh, when I declare the variable, or should I declare it in a constructor? I'm not sure what is the best way, but hmm. I'll keep this for now. And yeah, I'll keep this private. I don't want anybody accessing this. Now protected. Any other scene that might derive from this scene uh, can access it, of course. So, first thing we need to do is always create a um, constructor. That should be good. The update uh, function should actually update every single object in the list. So for each generic item GI in objects, um, GI update delta time, that's simple. And we'll do it the same thing for the draw function. And pass it the canvas drawing session. That's pretty much it for the generic scene. Hmm. Okay. I remember another thing we have to do is a 
function to add objects into the list. All right, let's do that. Mm. And then we want a generic GI to add into the list. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We don't have to do a no check because we created one like this, but I'm going to do it anyway just to be complete. Mm, and then we just add it to the list. And of course, it doesn't provide us a return value, so I have to do something like this. Get the count, add, and then get the count after the add. And of course, just check it. Mm -hmm. And something has gone terribly wrong, so at this point, you just return false. Okay. And we probably want a function to remove uh, an object from the list. So let's do that. So how do I want to do this? Hmm. Well, there's a remove function, I think. Yep. And then we just pass it the generic item. And the good thing is this actually returns a, um, a, a bool for us to use. So we can just do it that way. And I would want to overload this as well. <clears throat> With the index position. Remove at and then index. Index. Okay, there we go. That makes it a little bit more complete. So let's get rid of this. And that. Oh uh, well, so this does not return bool, but this does. Wow. Hmm. Well, I'll just do this again. And then, of course, you have to check to see if it's less than the size before. And at this point, it fell, so I'll return false. Yeah, there. Oh, the hassle we have to go through. Okay. So we've got a constructor, an update, a draw, an add object, a remove object, an overloaded, and a A, uh, a list of um, generic items. Hmm. That's, that's part of it. Okay, so to use this we uh, want to program another class which uh, will be a, kind of like a manager of sorts that manages um, uh, the collection of scenes. So a scene is a collection of well uh, items and then a scene manager is a collection of Scenes, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's just do that. It's part will look just like this function right here for the content uh, pipeline, but for scenes instead of Im images. So let's do that. Add a new C sharp. Hmm. I'll call this 
scene manager. I think most people will call it a storyboard instead, but now I'll just keep the scene manager. As always, change the namespace. And this is probably going to be a public static class. All right. How about we uh, before we do this, let's test out this generic scene first before um, before we start the scene manager, just to make sure it works. <clears throat> let's go back to main page. XAML. Now we let, we created a list of objects uh, before. We don't want to do that anymore. We'll create a generic scene and it tests there we go and then here we'll create the exact same list of uh, I don't know hmm. yeah okay so instead of adding it to the list that we just deleted will add it to the generic scene instead. So add object GI. There we go. So we add in 50 generic items into the scene. And to draw the scene, we don't have to do this for loop anymore. We just call generic scene draw see what that looks like okay yeah that works exactly the way we wanted it to work okay now that we confirm that it's working let's uh, do the scene manager class well let's see what we have to do for scene manager we need a pointer to the current scene, of course. This is what we're going to use to draw, uh, to dictate what is the current scene uh, so that the main loop knows uh, what scene to draw. Then we probably need a uh, collection somehow of scenes that we can reference by name, of course then a function to add a scene so basically it looks like uh, the image dictionary with a um, with a pointer to uh, to a current scene so let's do that generic scene and I'll call this current scene that and that is done collection of scene that we can reference by name and that is of course just a dictionary um, and the key will be a string and the value will be a generic scene and we will call this um, scene dictionary Excuse me. Okay. Now we need a function to add a scene. Mm. Add a scene, and of course, it'll be a generic scene GS to add. Okay. So we can just add a scene here. Oh, we need a key. But the key could be, hmm. The generic scene already has a name. So we can use the name of the scene as the key, right? So let's just do that. GS name, and then GS. Hmm. Okay. And this doesn't return a boolean so we can use my goodness so 
Is this stuff all over again? There we go. So basically a scene manager is just a collection of scenes. I may have to actually uh, fix these errors first. All right, so a scene manager is just a collection of scenes that we can reference by a unique key. I have a function to add the scene, and I have a pointer to whatever it thinks the current scene is. So their to do is gone, and I would later in the future I would like to add in a remove scene, of course. And we'll say that for another day, for like just some random day of programming that we that we do to uh, add in all the to-dos that are not really that important uh, to me. So there we go. Like always, when you download the source code, I will have um, the comments all set up. So you will have a nice little summary of just about everything that we do here. So now that we have a generic scene manager and a generic scene, we want to use it. Let's use the scene manager. So, hmm. okay. So, what we want to do is we want to create the scene actually inside of the create resource uh, function. So, we create the scene here, and then we want to add the scene to the scene manager. Like that. First, we'll just add in all the objects to make it. You don't have to, but we'll put it after we set up the scene. So this setup scene to do, uh, I mean, this should really be done in another function. But uh, for now, we will keep it in here. So we created a generic scene. Uh, we populated, we added to the scene manager, and for the life of me, um, uh, since we don't have any scenes, then we can just set the scene manager as current scene to the, our, the scene that we just made. Now, we should expect a error here because there's no GS anymore. So, all we have to do here is just check to see if the scene manager, current scene, it's not equal to null, and we just, well, draw it. Oops. Then just call draw on the current scene. And I hope uh, you see it coming all together now. We start very basic, and now we have a scene that contains just as many items as we want, and then we have a scene manager that manages all the scenes. and if you look at it, our draw function has basically came, come down to one if statement and one draw. That's all there is. So, and that's probably about all it will be. Um, maybe some error checking later in the future, but um, that's about it. So, let's see if this works by uh, pressing F5. And there we go. Nice. The advantage of doing this way is we can create, let's say we create another scene called high score. Then we can populate the high score with a different set of items. And then we can add it to the scene manager. And let's say when a user clicks a button, then we change the current scene to the high score. Then it, what will happen is uh, it will draw the high score scene. We don't have to do anything because the current scene is set to high score. And then let's say if they press escape, then it will set it back to um, the canon scene. And of course, when that gets set, the next draw iteration will come through and it will draw the canon scene. So that's how it works. Okay, um, let's recap. So in this episode, we introduce a generic scene. It has, it's just a generic item with special stuff. 
has the same update loop uh, and has a draw loop and all it does is update every single generic item and then in the draw it just draws every generic item it has on its list. I also have an add object and a renew object and a list of connect a list of objects I'm sorry yeah. Now in the scene manager it looks exactly like the content pipeline I said this is for scene it has just a dictionary the add scene and a pointer to the current scene. Um, thanks for watching. Like always, if, if you, uh, you like the series, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter and just like put a thumbs up or something. Or if you don't like it, put a thumbs down. <laughs> so um, all comments are, are all welcome. I uh, received a comment. Um, in my box that said my uh, mic is very very low I don't know how to fix that maybe I can set the gain a little bit higher but you know you can fix it on your end by just turning up the volume I guess um, like the, and make sure you get the if you haven't already get Visual Studios 2013 Community Edition it's for free check the links below and um, if you're listening to this on Twitch then uh, just click that heart button or something and uh, always uh, check the video archives if you want to watch previous episodes. So let's see if what happens for ep episode 5. Well in episode 5 I want to introduce the game loop because right now um, it only gets drawn once and update once. So what I want to do is create a game loop that updates a certain time per second and draws a certain time per second. So we can add stuff like gravity and uh, each time the update gets called it should pull a, a generic uh, item down and um, it and of course it will uh, call draw at the same time so what happens is the the y value will decrease or yeah actually it will increase because this is a computer screen and then it will keep on drawing and then you'll see a animation that falling down. Another thing I would like to do is maybe introduce a generic input uh, such that uh, the mouse and keyboard will work for our scenes. I haven't decided which one I want to do for episode 5 yet so bear with me. But with all this stuff here we can basically create a um, kind of like a Minesweeper clone and uh, um, I think I'm going to take a little break uh, while I'm deciding to do what episode 5 is about and um, I might program a, a Minesweeper uh, clone uh, with the stuff that we already have here and just to show you that if you just set up your project right with these just these four simple uh, objects here you can create something pretty cool and I'll open that project for you right now because I've kind of been cheating and look, working a little bit ahead okay so let's open that project. And of course there's a little bit more uh, classes here but they're all derived from the four that we have programmed so far. So let's just press play and see what this is all about. As you can see um, this is the very uh, first uh, kind of like a template for the Minesweeper game and you know what Minesweeper is it's just a popular Microsoft game that comes on the operating system and it's just, it just contains a bunch of square boxes with text in it and you figure out where the bombs are at based off uh, the, uh, the number on the box so as you can see it's it's coming to and uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I might just live stream live stream this uh, programming project uh, um, while I decide uh, what I want to do for episode 5. Uh, like always, uh, thanks for watching. Good night.